The great Kresimir Čosić passed away 25 years ago yesterday on May 25th of 1995. Honestly, we need a few shows uh, or a few weeks worth of shows to adequately define the legacy of the former BYU basketball and international hoops star. Just how vital is Kresimir Čosić's legacy to BYU hoops? Our stat of the day will shed some light on that. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Chris Mirchosich is the only BYU basketball player in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And he never played in the NBA. Let, let's talk about Kresh uh, for a moment. We talked about him a couple weeks ago in the best to wear it uh, for number 11. Um, it was He was inducted in John Wooden's class, by the way. How about that? So uh, Chris Mirchosich comes to BYU from Yugoslavia. That becomes Croatia later, where he lives in Zadar, right? Um, and I tweeted out yesterday, great stuff from Dick Harmon of uh, the Deseret News recently on, on Crash. And then there was a documentary made uh, that you should watch online as well. So at BYU, he was good, but he was way better after. So let's talk about this. Because I think Chris Mirchosic is the most influential BYU basketball player ever. I think Danny Ainge is probably the best player ever. When you look at influence, though, straight influence, Crash. Because what he did in the game in Europe uh, and off the court, frankly, has been amazing. So let's talk about it. At BYU, couldn't play as a freshman. That was a rule, and it was a dumb rule, but they changed it. That's by weird. The, by the end uh, of, of his tenure here. 17th in scoring with no freshman season. If he had had a freshman season, he'd be top 10. Ooh. Still, uh, second in rebounds all time per game and fifth in scoring. He's one of the great – he's in the top three. He's with Ainge and Jimmer. Without with, a freshman with, season. Without a freshman season. Granted, maybe those numbers go down a little bit if he's still warming up. Uh, the only child to pass Chris Mirchosic this last year in double-doubles, 48. It took 40 years almost for that record to go down from Chris Mirchosic. He was awesome. So he, he's drafted twice after his junior year to the Blazers and senior year to the Lakers. He chooses not to play. Ah, oh, it would have been fun to watch Chosic on the, on the uh, Lakers uh, seven years later with Magic Johnson, by the way. Can you imagine? Oh, he would have been on those teams. So he goes to Europe, and he had played already in the, uh, you know, the Olympics and got a silver, but he ends up getting another silver and even a gold medal in the Olympics, beating U the USSR, beating the United States. World championships, two golds, two silvers, five-time Euro champ, eight-time national champ, meaning he won his domestic league. He was so influential that uh, Arvidas Sabonis uh, talked about him in this way. So this is from... Uh, a member of the International Olympic Committee back in the day. I can't pronounce the name. Antun uh, Vodolak. The best confirmation of logically choosing Chosic is the answer Sabonis, Arvidas Sabonis, Demontis Sabonis' dad, gave to the question on who his idol was. Modesty has never been a distinction of Arvidas Sabonis, but he did, however, say that he would like to achieve what Creso Chosic had, the best that had ever walked the basketball courts in Europe. Wow. Billy Packer said that Chris Mirchosic was the first great international player. He was the fourth All-American ever from outside the States. But he, was, he, he went home and had this amazing influence. He got baptized here. He ends up helping with the translation of the scriptures into Croatian. He's the deputy ambassador for Croatia to the U.S., lives in D.C., and just had this amazing influence. He is the most influential player in BYU basketball history. And we are in our 30s. I do not want people to forget about this guy. So that's why we're talking about him, because yesterday was the 25th anniversary of his death. He was so good, notable, influential, creative. He was a point center, 6'11 with a handle. You see the passes. Like, this guy was an all-timer, man, and he's in the Basketball Hall of Fame. He was taken from us way too soon. Yes. Died of cancer yeah. in 1995, but we're talking about a world – political figure, not just a great basketball player, but I mean, his basketball career opened up some doors for him. But he wanted to make a bigger difference than just being an international superstar. So great respect for him. And it's fun to talk with people that got to watch him play on the regular. And I've had a number of conversations that were just like, and adding in is uh, Kate, Kathy Warner having from Twitter saying, loved, loved, loved watching Kresimir Chosich play. If you have never watched him, it is a must. Find the highlights. And we just showed you some I, of them. I'm going to look in the archives, see if we don't have a whole game we can't bust out here. Let me put this into perspective for the Young Bucks. Everybody loves Luka Doncic, right? Oh, Luka Doncic! Kresh was that guy of his time in that area of and the world 6 -11, timeline. By the at 6'11". Dirk Nowitzki! 
Kreshimir Chosic was that guy. Tony Kukoc was the number one player in Europe in 1992, right? Kukoc and Drazen Petrovic and those guys played with Chosic when he was older. And they all that? looked up to him. He was the GOAT in that area. Okay, He, he was the Europe. GOAT. There was great ball still being had, right? And we're seeing that more often now. Oh, man, opted to play and make an impact in his own war-torn home country. And just an incredible ambassador. Him. So, yes, if you're if you're young and you've never heard of him, know who this guy is. Crash, know who this man. Guy is. He, yeah. He's the man that built the Marriott Center. Essentially. Essentially. How about that?